So Thunder Laser recently released this machine right here, the Thunder Bolt. God of Thunder. And when I was getting the emails about the release, I saw this really interesting video from their CEO. What's up everybody? I'm Clay from Thunder Laser and this is an exciting day because we've got the new Bolt. So this machine is delivered to your door for less than $5,000. And I can assure you, I swear on my grandmother's grave, this machine is the best value on the market, hands down. Shots fired. Shots fired. So Thunder Laser is super confident that this is the best desktop CO2 machine you can get in the around $5,000 range. So in this video, we're gonna have a classic face-off with the competition and find out. We're gonna have five different competitors. First is the Thunder Laser Bolt. Oh, no. And then we're gonna compare it to the competition. Probably the closest actually in competition is the X-Tool P2. We also are going to look at the Glowforge Pro, so the top end of the Glowforge. And we're also gonna compare it to a lower end machine, specifically the Ohm Tech Polar. And then finally, just as a means of comparison, we're gonna compare this to the Thunder Nova 24. And we're gonna go through a bunch of different categories and I'm gonna rank these machines one through five with five being the highest. Now a quick caveat before we get going, I'm an affiliate for pretty much all of these companies. Thunder actually sent me this machine so that I could do this review, but they actually don't even have an affiliate program. So if you do decide to pick up this machine, I really don't get a kickback. So take all of that with the grain of salt. I'm gonna do my best to give you my honest opinion. So first off, let's actually talk about what might be the most important thing to you, and that is the price. So the bolt kind of sits in the middle of the competition. This is $5,000. With the Thunder Nova being the most expensive at $7,400, the X-Tool P2 at $4,500, the Glowforge Pro at $7,000, and then the Ohm Tech Polar is our cheapest unit at $3,000. So the rankings for this category really isn't subjective at all. The lowest is gonna get the highest score with the Thunder right here in the middle with a three out of five. Out of Thunder. Okay, so next up, let's talk about general build quality. This is a very, very nice unit. In fact, I'm gonna rank this basically better than everything you can sit on a desk other than the Thunder Nova 24, which really isn't quite a desktop unit. So this is going to get four points out of five for us. And the reason for that is just the overall build. Thunder does an incredible job. So if you guys haven't heard about Thunder before, and they do produce these overseas, but the company also has a US base out of the United States down in Texas, and they're awesome at quality control. So kind of just going around this, the machine, uh, this is a solid metal construction pretty much throughout. The top is like a polycarbonate slash acrylic, uh, and that is gonna be glass on a few of the other units. So that might be the only knock that I have on this. Um, it has a camera, and that's not something you really find on some of the other Thunder units, uh, but it is something you're gonna find on pretty much all of the other desktop style. But the actual mechanics and the internals of these are really nice. All the wires are clean, really easy to understand. You you can just tell they took their time with putting this together. And in fact, they actually make it really easy to get into the brains and the internals of this unit. You have uh, these doors on both sides that you can open up. I'm gonna do it here. We pretty much can get access to all of the wiring on the machine. And with the build quality, they do a really great job with safety. You have an emergency stop right here. And there's actually a key you have to have inserted to be able to turn this on. And if I was to open up any of these doors, including obviously the lid, while this was running, there are sensors and it would cut the power to the laser, the machine would stay on, but then you'd be able to restart it once you get those closed. And a cool feature of this machine as well is what is happening all right here. First, you have this like cool, just glowing panel, which is just fun to look at. But if you open this up, you have access to the complete Z axis. We're gonna get to the work bed and the work area size here in a second, but it's big. And this is a mechanical Z axis. And you can see that this is coming down with uh, the nice honeycomb bed down here as well. And then you have this like chip tray slash dust that rolls out. You can remove and then empty this out. And actually this is some of the stuff that I was working with earlier and I'm just gonna dump it on the floor. You're gonna throw my things on the ground? But just the attention to detail on this machine is great. Even like little things, you've got these just rubber wheels on the bottom and it locks into a little track inside where it just easily rolls in and out. And that's really just something that you could have just made like a removable tray, um, but they are taking the extra time to make it easy to use. And that's really just something that carries out throughout the Thunder Bolt. Now I will say the Nova series is a hair bit nicer. That's gonna have a few more features like the ability to adjust the amount of air assist. The top is going 
going to be glass. Some of the internals are going to be a little bit nicer. But when you compare this with the rest of the competition, so Xtool and Ohmtech and Glowforge, this is going to be above it. So this is going to get four points out of five for build quality. Out of thunder. Now next up are really two different things, your cutting ability and your engraving ability. And normally in the past, I've compared that just with the overall laser power. But this guy is a little bit different. This is actually a RF laser. So instead of a glass tube in the back, it's a full metal enclosure, which is a lot more robust. But when it comes to cutting and engraving, the beam is going to be smaller. And typically you're going to see those also with less wattages. So for this, we're talking a 30 watt machine that's compared to like 50 to 60 for the competition. Now it's not directly apples to apples, but most of the times when you're looking at an RF machine, the primary use case is going to be for engraving, which it does an incredible job of. But it's still can cut. And to give you kind of a direct comparison, um, I did this test file. This is something that Thunder supplies directly. And I did it with the Thunder Nova, which is a 60 watt unit, and then the Thunder Bolt. You can kind of see where the differences are going to come. Uh, it definitely is stronger, and but this is also like double the wattage. But at lower speeds and higher wattages, this still can cut out material. In this case, this is a three millimeter or eighth inch birch plywood. It does a good job. So with that being said, this is actually gonna come in last versus the competition when we're talking talking specifically about cutting. So this will get one point for that category. You call yourself Lord of Thunder. And with that being said, I know there are a lot of things that can go into the cutting performance, like the focus distance on the lens. You can have different ones set up to do different things. But in general, if you're gonna compare this directly, this isn't gonna be as strong. But if we're talking about engraving, that is where this thing really can shine because the laser beam is so small. In fact, they list this out as being able to do a thousand DPI or dots per inch. And then if you compare that to the Nova 24, depending on the lens that you have on there, it can be like 500 to 800 DPI. And then the other machines sometimes don't even list their DPIs, but I usually find the other desktop CO2 units engraving performance isn't as nice as even the Nova. So this one is going to be the best and give us five points. Here you can see me doing some engraving examples at 1000 dpi at a pretty high speed. This was like anywhere between 600 to 1000 millimeters per second, but it does a really, really nice job. A few other things about having an RF based system versus a CO2 based system all comes back to that metal enclosure. One of the big things is it's going to be a lot more durable. So you don't have a glass tube in the back that can break. The cost for those tubes are going to be more expensive to replace, but they're also going to last a lot longer. I usually find it kind of washes out for cost savings. And then a big thing with this that I don't even have on this comparative chart is the fact that you don't need any type of water chiller. So with the Nova series, you're gonna have an external water chiller, which is the best setup for a CO2 machine. And then with the Xtool and the Ohmtech and the Glowforge, they usually have like an internal water reservoir that is built into the machine. And those do an okay job, but just the fact that it doesn't have as much water as like an external water chiller, um, those can heat up faster, especially if you're in like a hot environment. So you're not gonna be able to run the machine as much. And if you live somewhere where it gets cold, specifically below freezing, you're gonna either have to put some type of antifreeze into the water system, or just make sure that tube isn't going to break. You don't have to worry about having something like hanging off of the machine like you do with the Nova 24. So even though this is a bigger, nicer machine, I love that this is all within a single package, which is what you also find with the Omtech Polar or the Xtool P2 or the Glowforge. The Lord of Thunder sends his best. All right, next up, let's talk about work area. <laughs> specifically in the X and the Y. So this isn't the depth. This is a 20 by 12 inch work area. And this is going to be third in the ranking. So it also will give us three points with the Thunder Nova being number one. Again, that really isn't a desktop machine. It's a lot bigger, but then the Xtool P2 is also a little bit bigger than this as well. Um, it is actually 26 by 13. So a little bit different shaped rectangle, but moving on to the depth, that is where this really shines. <laughs> So this has a max depth of 4.3 inches. Um, that's compared to 6.1 on the Thunder Nova. Again, that's just a much bigger, different type of machine. But for the Xtool P2, that's only two and a half inches. You can get a riser, but that's going to be an additional cost that does give you a bigger range. And then it's like two to one and a half inches for the Omtech Polar, as well as the Glowforge. So for depth, the Thunder is going to get four points. God of Thunder. <laughs> <laughs> now really the con of having a bigger work area is you're gonna have a bigger machine. 
So for machine area, basically the smaller machine, I'm gonna rank as the highest. So to get the most points, which I know is like opposite of having the biggest work area, but you get the idea. So with this guy, we're looking at 39.4 by 25.2 by 10.6 inches, which gives us an area about 17,500. Uh, the Nova is the only one that is going to be bigger than this. Now this is a bigger unit and it's only going to get two points. Now one thing with that size though, is the like actual footprint of it, isn't what's taking up the majority of the size, it actually is a good bit higher than the other desktops that you are going to see. So even if you have a limited work area in terms of footprint, but maybe you can go up high, this still could be something that can work on a desk for you. Okay, so there's really only two things that have the most impact on the performance of the machine, and that is going to be power, which we've already talked about, as well as speed. This guy is fast. This is a thousand millimeters per second, which ties the Nova 24 also at a thousand millimeters per second. So this is going to get all five points for this category. Speed, I'm speed. And usually with the desktop CO2 machines, you're not gonna really see much over five to 600 millimeters per second. 600, the XLP2 has. And actually on this chart, I don't even have a speed listed for Glowforge. They don't make that public, but I actually have done side-by-side -side tests with the Glowforge and I think the Ohmtech Polar before, and the Polar was faster, so the Glow forge is going to be at the very bottom in terms of speed. Now to get that really nice performance, you have to make sure you have your laser dialed in in terms of focus. All of these machines have a Z axis that can go up and down. So for both Thunder machines, that comes from the bed being able to drop up and down. And actually, as you get into some of the bigger machines in general, that's normally what you find. But with the Omtech Polar and the X-Tool P2 and the Glowforge, the actual laser head will move up and down. I find in general that the bed moving is better because you're able to maintain your alignment a lot better since you have less moving parts on the actual laser beam path. But all of these machines will actually find the focus point different. This is my favorite way that it does it because it just uses a straight up touch probe. It's built directly onto the laser head. It's going to move the bed up until that probe touches. It's going to push it in and then it will get it dialed in. That physical means of connection is nearly foolproof. It does an incredible job. And if you look at like the super, super high end lasers, they pretty much all use that. But the other ones still work as well. I'm going to say the second best is the Nova 24. I think it's like an IR sensor that they have on both sides of their work bed. They're gonna bring the material up. Once it breaks that laser beam, it's gonna know where the material is and then focus it from there. The XTool P2 uses something kind of crazy. It uses like a red laser dot and then from there Glowforge actually uses a camera into the laser head itself to measure the distance. And then coming in at the very bottom is going to be the Ohmtech Polar uh, because it doesn't actually have a way of finding focus. Um, it can move the focus through the software but you're still gonna need to measure the material yourself and then put it in the software and then it will dial it in from there. So for focus, this is going to get all five points. Oh, focus. So from there, how are you actually going to be interacting with the machine? You can start all the way at the bottom in terms of ranking. That is going to be Glowforge, where the only thing you can do physically with the machine itself is pressing a button. And depending on your situation, maybe you are in a school or you're with little people that might hurt themselves. That could be a great situation because they can accidentally start the machine. But I'm going to rank that at the bottom. Uh, the Polar is going to be the same thing. It just has that single button push. The Xtool P2 also has a button, but it has a few different status indicators, which is handy. So you can kind of know what's going on with the unit. And then the Nova has a pretty standard uh, roulette controller, which you're going to see on a lot of these type units, especially like ones you might see from Omtech or Monport. But the Thunderbolt actually has the upgraded version of that. This is a color screen. It's also a touch screen, which is super nice. So this is going to come in at the very top and get all five points. What I love about just Rowetta controllers in general, and then specifically this one, is you can do everything from the controller itself. You can see I actually have a USB stick that is plugged in right now. You can export your file through the software and then bring it in directly to the machine. So you don't have to have this connected to anything to get it to work. You do have a PC slash USB port and an ethernet port if you do need to connect it directly to the computer. And I definitely have done that and it works great, but you're able to pull up all the different files. You'll autofocus it directly from the machine. Um, you can do the framing directly from the machine, which is really handy. So you can figure out where things are going to be placed on your work bed and then you can jump into all the different settings 
settings and system stuff from there. Now, another thing that most of these machines have is going to be a rotary. And they have a rotary that's provided by Rotobot. I'm gonna do a full video just dedicated to that just because it's a whole different thing. Um, one thing on this controller that I like about that, you actually have controls for the spinning. And that's really helpful with cylinders because you're able to figure out where you want that to actually engrave. So in terms of interface, this is going to get all five points. You speak of control. Now with that interface, you are going to be using some type of software. That's where you're going to be either designing your stuff or you're going to be importing pictures and then exporting all the commands that the laser needs to actually run. Pretty much all of these are the same other than one. So they all support Lightburn, which is my favorite piece of software that I've ever used for a laser. And actually I have a full course on that if you guys want to check that out. But the Xtool P2 not only supports that, but they also have their own software. I think it's like Xtool creative space or something along those lines that they've developed throughout the years. You can use that not only on their CO2, so the P2 unit, but also on their diodes like the Xtool D1. That one's also nice because it's a lot more user friendly if you've never seen this stuff before. So I am going to give the advantage to the Xtool P2 for all the points and then everything else is going to be tied. So the bolt is going to get four out of five points for the software. Do you have a computer? No, what for? Okay, now the very last category is going to be support. Thunder is great. I mentioned before that Thunder has an office in the United States. You can actually jump onto their YouTube channel and you can see they do like a weekly call where they go over different issues that people might be having. But I actually had first-hand experience with this. I had an issue with the firmware with the machine. This was like a early unit and it was really easy. I just emailed them directly, not even the contact I was working with for the review side of things, but just the straight support line. Emailed back and forth, they sent me pictures, sent me the right firmware, it was up and going. Um, and that all happened very quickly. They also have a phone number. And that's something you really don't find often, especially with these companies that are bringing in machines from overseas. And on that phone number, you're going to talk with someone in the US. So the Nova and the Bolt, I'm both going to rank at the top and give all five points. And then the others I'm going to rank from there. This is what friends do. They support each other. All right. So those are the categories. And if we tally everything up, you can see here are the rankings. Is this the best desktop CO2 machine that you can get in the $5,000 range? Yes. This is going to get a grand total of 46 out of a maximum 60 points. The only machine that does better is the Nova 24 at 48 points. Yes! Also, the Nova 24 is almost $2,500 more expensive. It's a much different style machine. So the fact that this gets so close to that is honestly Amazing. And if you actually compare it to the direct competition in the price range, so that Xtool P2, this is going to come out on top. The Xtool P2 came in with 41 points, Polar Next at 30, and the Glow Forge at 26. Now, with all that being said, do I recommend this machine? to you. Now with pretty much all of these machines, especially when you're getting to the higher price points, it really depends on what you're trying to do. If you are a hobbyist and you're just trying to like engrave a couple things like a week uh, or just like play around with it, does having a machine that costs $5,000 make the most sense for you practically? Maybe not. You might be able to get away with just having a diode machine, which is several thousand dollars less expensive if you're just playing around. But if you are running a small business, where you're having to crank out products where the performance as well as the support really matters to you, then yes, I think this could be a great option for you. And if we're talking about in this price category, so the three to even like $7,000, this really is the best machine that you can get if you are weighing all those different categories the same way that I am. Now, I've been comparing this unit to the Thunder Nova machine, but where this actually directly compares to is their Odin machine. Odin. That is the other RF laser that they have. It is much more expensive, so like over $17,000. It's also a lot bigger, 32 by 20, and the internals are beefed up as well. It has a max speed of 2,000 millimeters per second, so twice this guy. So you could also think of this unit basically like a scaled down Odin at a really nice price point, especially compared to the bigger brother. I'm Thor, son of Odin. Okay, if you are just getting into these machines and want to have a better idea of all the options that are out there, not just those desktop CO2s, I did a full breakdown of pretty much all the different types of lasers you can get and which one might make the most sense for you. And we're going to jump into that right now. Until next time, go make or break something in your shop. See you guys.